Yes. The vice president and I know. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yeah, Mr. President, Vice President. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi, you're uh, Mr. President. Yes, sir. I thought you'd like to know I did survive my afternoon with the committee and with the members of the Senate. We had quite a few in there. They were uh, anything but charitable. Your our friend Bill Fulbright, Albert Gore, and uh, Joe Clark. Those fellows uh, are living under the assumption that. Uh, that uh, we really just don't walk that extra mile for peace, and that that Viet Cong crowd is just a sort of a nice little outfit. God, that's incredible. But I think we came out all right. Well, tell me about what happened. Well, the main thing they uh, uh, they wanted to talk about was uh, uh, the uh, foreign aid program and. Uh, whether or not uh, we were making any big commitments overseas, and I pointed out that we were doing nothing of the kind, and that uh, uh, that they knew that these funds were appropriated funds and authorized funds, and uh, they wanted to know well, why was it necessary to make these announcements over there? And I said possibly because it was an opportunity to talk frankly with governments about the difficulties that we were having from the Congress of the United States and being able to obtain foreign aid funds necessity for their governments to take a very good look at their budgeting and their allocation of resources that we believed in self-help, we believed in peace, and we wanted an implementation of the Tashkent Agreement. Uh, that sort of thing, I think we handled that all right, uh, but Bill Fulbright just kept coming back, just simply saying, well, I just want to be sure that uh, you're not uh, out there just offering more economic aid to everybody around the country and uh, so on, and I... I told him, I said, well, the Senator, uh, I offered only what uh, you had authorized and what the President, uh, who is the chief executive of this country, uh, 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 scheduled under the authorizations of the Congress. You people authorized it. You're the ones that appropriated the money. And uh, then we got down around to what our position was on uh, negotiations. I said, it's amazing to me that Americans are senators are asking about what our position is, and I repeated it in 16 different ways. And uh, uh, the question then came, you made, well, why don't you just accept the Viet Cong as the uh, as a political force in the negotiation? I said the president has made it crystal clear that we would never, that the uh, matter of representation uh, would not be an in, uh, insurmountable obstacle or difficulty. That, uh, these were matters that if we could ever get anybody that would ever pick up the telephone, would ever say they wanted to talk, that these were all matters which could be subject to preliminary discussions. We can't even get anybody to discuss. I told them we'd try to get the Pope. We'd work with the Pope. We'd work with the President of India. We'd work with the Prime Minister of Great Britain, with the United Nations. And we tried every way, but if you fellows have any, any new ideas as to how we can get somebody to talk to us, well, then we can talk about who comes to the conference. 
and I went over that, and then they said, well, now you just sort of feel that uh, you've gone around and hardened the position on the Viet Cong, and I said, no, I hadn't hardened the position on the Viet Cong at all, uh, that uh, we were not talking about negotiations, we were talking about whether or not, uh, uh, without any negotiations, we ought to just announce to the world that we're going to give part of the government to, uh, uh, to the communists. I said, I had never heard of any such uh, kind of discussion from a responsible nation. You couldn't expect the government of the United States to start dishing out the government of South Vietnam to the people that were trying to destroy it. But I said that uh, when it got down to negotiations, we, uh, we've said that uh, everything was negotiable, that uh, the four points of Hanoi are 14 points, the five points of South Vietnam, you name it, all of them were on the table. If anybody would come and talk, but we can't talk alone. God, I went over it with them a hundred times. And uh, then uh, we, uh, uh, we got into a discussion of the National Liberation Front. And, uh, it's an amazing thing that these fellows uh, are just not convinced that this is all uh, communist controlled. Oh, when I pinned it, when I really got at them at the end, well, they said, well, now it maybe is, but uh, it, may, it, it just wasn't in the beginning. And we've made it communist controlled by forcing their hands with escalation. That's just not true, and uh, I was very patient, Mr. President. I don't think I ever lost my temper. And uh, I, there were many friends there, fortunately. Senator Saltonstall was there, Senator Keeper was there, Senator Pastore was there, uh, Senator Carlson was there, and uh, uh, Senator Case was there, Senator Symington and uh, Senator Dodd. And, oh, we, had a, we had a good group, but uh, when you get to Bill Fulbright, we get to uh, uh, Albert Gore and, uh, and Joe Clark, it, it, it's really something. Then they ended up by saying quite privately off the record, they said, oh, the main reason that there about 16 or 17 of them were taking the position that they were taking is because uh, they wanted to be sure that when the president had to compromise that, the, uh, that there'd be a wing in the Democratic Party that could defend him. And uh, I never said anything. I just... Uh, they wanted to, uh, they uh, said that they were having trouble getting administration witnesses. I said, I hadn't noticed that. Uh, that we were always uh, prepared to testify. I said that I couldn't speak for uh, the other gentlemen of the administration, except that I knew that the president had uh, instructed everyone that uh, was in a responsible position, obviously responsible to Congress, that we understood the needs of the role of Congress, and we respected that role so on and so on. But Albert Gore was just trying to, uh, he wanted me just to say that, uh, that we just recognized the National Liberation Front and, uh, as a uh, force in its own right. And I said, uh, I said, Senator, I, I said, I, I can't do that. I said, it, it, it is a operation set up by Hanoi and controlled by Hanoi. And I'm not in any position to make any policy statements like that. And I don't intend to. What's this got to do with your trip? Not one damn thing. That's what I said. I said to them uh, when I, uh, uh, I said to Senator Fulbright, I said, Senator, I've been answering questions here a great deal about uh, a number of matters that uh, do not uh, relate to, uh, to my journey and uh, my mission. Uh, well, he said, I heard all about that. He said, we heard all about that over at the White House. He said, oh, well, that was all covered over at the White House. I said, well, that's what I thought. But uh, I understood you to say that, uh, that the environment there wasn't conducive to the kind of questions you wanted to, to, to question me. And that's why I uh, felt that uh, out of respect for you and for the committee and the Senate that uh, if you wanted to have an informal discussion with me, uh, I'd be more than happy to do so. But I said, I've been here like I'm on the witness stand. And I said, don't misunderstand me. I'm perfectly prepared to answer or, I mean, do the best to answer the questions. But uh, I thought I'd given a pretty good accounting of the, of the trip, and I've got some more information here that I'd like to share with you. And I, I discussed with them the India situation and uh, Pakistan and so on. And, and all Bill Fulbright had was a lot of old goddamn newspaper clippings that he kept reading to me and where somebody might have had a, <coughs> a slight exaggeration or a twist of their own. And uh, 
say, well, now, what about that? And I'd say, well, that's, uh, that's part uh, correct, but uh, it doesn't really reflect exactly what I said. And I said, let me read you. And I would read uh, from a message that I had uh, sent back some certain portion to the State Department. And I uh, just didn't write. I think that uh, I, I can only say, Mr. President, that your judgment as usual was better than mine. I'd been a whole lot better off if I told them to go to hell from my own point of view. But I think now at least they've got it out of their craw, and uh, most of the boys are rather pleased. I'll wait and see what the press has to say. The press asked me what happened. I said I was treated uh, with uh, I was treated uh, with respect, uh, and I was uh, given. Uh, or thoughtful questions, and I answered in a respectful, thoughtful, and direct manner. I have respect for the Congress of the United States, and I, I tried to convey that respect by the sense of my replies. I hope that I was informative, and that's all I said. I didn't discuss very much of it. Looked like McCarthy was a little mean. He said that you discussed the administration Vietnam policy, if there was one. Is that what he said on yeah. the... Yeah. Mm. Well... I don't know what came over him. He came in here. He and I had a long talk yesterday. We went down and had a little lunch together. He was very friendly. I don't know what, what's eating these fellows. Uh, I just think they've gotten themselves uh, bound up into a little uh, cabal there that they uh, they just don't really know how to get out of it. Well, I don't know how he's gotten bound into it. I don't know what to... Uh, is he... They say his wife feels very deeply, and that he feels very deeply, and it's kind of a, uh, uh, they're really violent about it. Has he got a young boy or something that might be going to war? No, 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 not at all. He hasn't got uh, none of his, uh, one of them, he's about 14 years of age, the oldest one. The boy, no, the boy's about 12. I talked to him yesterday about his boat, and he told me, he said, well, hell, he said, I just don't believe in resolutions, that's all. He said, that's the reason I voted that way. He said, I, uh, he said, I think the president's got that authority without a resolution. I didn't believe Eisenhower ought to have one. I just don't believe, I didn't believe Kennedy ought to have one. I don't believe Johnson ought to have one. Did he vote against any of them? Uh, he voted with the, uh, he voted not to table the horse. Uh, he was one of the five. Yeah, I say, but did he vote against any of Kennedy's or? Not a damn one uh, of them. Any of Eisenhower's? Nope. Nope. And he voted for this one before. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't quite ring true, does it? No, it doesn't. Yet, uh, I, he voted, of course, for the appropriation. He voted against the earnest screening one. Uh, it's just hard to figure him out. I, I really believe that these fellows have just got themselves worked up into a, a kind of a pitch. Uh, they are just... As a matter of fact, today, Bill Fulbright said that he said he just thought that before any foreign aid was given and any military assistance, you ought to come back here and just consult with this committee. Just sitting around there, just like a bunch of uh, old women. I just have decided, uh, very frankly, that the best way for us to do is just go cut our own grass and the hell with them. But uh, I'll be nice about it. I, was, I never made an unkind word, and they kept... Uh, uh, Professing their love and affection for both of us, uh, but this was their duty. I said, I understand that. Now, uh, what did the other 20 senators do with these three? Uh... Well, the rest of them were pretty good. Uh, they didn't say much. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing that you generally go through. They don't get a chance to say much. Uh, Symington was good, and uh, let me see, uh, Case was good. If, no, he wasn't bad of New Jersey. Um, George Aiken asked a couple of questions that were all that weren't too bad. Uh, I forgot now what Aiken asked about. It was uh, oh, about uh, wasn't Russia the one that really could uh, do something about this thing? And I pointed out, quite frankly, that uh, we I uh, had tried to, uh, to the best of my ability never to do anything or say anything that could uh, be provocative to the Soviet Union and indeed even to communism. China, but I said, stick to the Soviet Union that we didn't want to, to escalate this struggle. We surely didn't need any more difficulties than we presently had. And that uh, I doubted that, I said, I felt the reason that the Soviet Union 